You know how I love me some retro tech. Today we have the ICOM AT180. It's an automatic antenna tuner from ICOM. And this comes from the ICOM 706 generation of transceivers, but it works with the 706, the 7100, and the 7200, and then that's where it stops. So this thing will tune HF through 50 megahertz. It comes in on a whopping 5.1 pounds. It's fairly heavy, but the reason why it's heavy is because this thing, I believe, I haven't opened it up yet, but you know what we're gonna do. I believe that it is motorized servo controlled on the tuning as opposed to relays and capacitors. So that's gonna be really interesting when we get inside of it. It is good for 120 watts of power, but there is no mention anywhere that I can find of what the tuning range is on this thing. Obviously it's better than no tuner built into either the 706, the 7200, the 7100, and this will even work with the 713. And as far as I know, all of those radios do not have a built-in tuner. So this is definitely better than that. The cool thing about this is that it doesn't require any external power. It is plugged in directly to the back of the radio using the accessory cable, which is the, the DIN connector with 13 pins inside of it. I don't know how they shoved that many pins in there. I would not want to build one of those by myself because I could do it, but it would be a pain. I played with this a couple of times. This is the tuner I took with me on the Kilo in a weekend. So it was definitely put through a torture test on a thousand contacts in a weekend there. And then I did another video tuning up a doublet with it and it did fairly okay on that. But what I am interested in is what's inside. Here's how you connect it to the 7100. Just a few quick connections on the back, the antenna connection, obviously, and the data connection so that the two can talk to each other and tune up and know when they're in tune. And then on the 7100, all you have to do is push the tune button on the front. I can find zero configuration to make this thing work or not work. It just does. You plug it in, you push the button, and it works. Kind of, kind of plug and play, if you will. Here's what you do on the 706. Plug it into the same accessory connection on the back, on the front, find a clear space on the band, and push the tune button. Again, I didn't, I didn't even bother to look for settings on this one. This thing was actually made for the 706, so it is that vintage, and you can kind of see hints around the front of it as to how they share kind of what we call brand language. They have the same curvature and overall shape and so forth. It's the same dimensions as the main body of the 7100, but the 706 is actually a little bit shorter. So pretty neat little device. Let's get over on the bench. AT180 guts. Here we come. Oh, these are JIS screws. Love it. I get to use my JIS screwdriver bits. <laughs> okay, I kind of expected a little bit more in the box than that, but that's okay. Holy moly, this is going to be a job here. What have I gotten myself into this time? Big screws on the bottom. And we're free. Free to do what? I don't know, but we're free. It ain't going out the back. I guess it's going to have to go out the front. Here we go. So there's four little tabs on the front here that you have to push in in order to move forward. And there are those motors. Okay, there is a control connector over here. Brown towards the back if it's not keyed. Yeah, it's keyed. So no worries on that end. And that frees that up. And there's two RF connectors on the side over here. There's an RF connector that connects here on the board and connects there. And that is the front connector and the inner connector. And it's one of those types. And then one more. And that's the one that runs back inside of the, the main unit. And now we have the body done. And this is a metal case with a thin metal lid. So there's some shielding there potentially. And where do we go from here? Those are the servo motors I was thinking existed. All right, let's take this metal case off here. Oh, lost it. Okay, those servo motors need to have their connectors removed. All right, there we go. Perfect. So before we go too much farther down that path, let's see if we can look at this board here together. And I don't know that we can. Wow, oh, I don't want to do that. Okay, we're going to have to do that. Yuck. Since I'm just trying to take a look, I'm trying my best to not take too much apart. That way we don't get into too much trouble. 
But trouble seems to be our destiny here. Okay, and then black coax connector towards the back. Away from the servos. Okay, so now we can look at this board here together. And we have a Mitsubishi chip. We have a couple of... I guess these are Toshiba chips. These are made in the 49th week of 1994, so that gives you kind of a time frame on when this was put together. 36 week of 93 for this chip. A couple of toroids, a couple of relays. A magic RF can right there. And this is board number B3932G. Lots of inductors on that board. Okay, now to this one here, which is the one that I was really looking for. So this piece here was taped over the big magic toroid. The black wired coax goes to the right from the, if you're looking from the servo side, the black coax goes to the right. So there's a little bit of an RF shield. And now we get to see all of the magic that I was looking for. And that is exactly what I thought it was. These servo motors here spin these capacitors here to add and remove capacitance. That is fantastic. And this is board ICOM B4739 Alpha, Baker 4739 Alpha. So capacitors, inductors this big inductor here is tapped so this big inductor instead of being one long inductor is one two three four variations of four smaller inductors this is fantastic this is exactly what i thought this would look like inside this is great and then it still has a ton of relays inside so this is a really interesting design well my curiosity has been satisfied at this point the owner's manual for this is actually really fantastic it has a complete parts list of what's inside and some diagrams for a speech processing board. That ought to be interesting to play with. These things come up on eBay from time to time and it looks like the sale price is anywhere between 200 and 350. And I also see that this will work with the ICOM 7000. So that's pretty neat. It's uh, 706, 7000, 7100, and 7200. And then the 7, what is it, the 713? 718, pretty cool. I'm gonna get to putting this thing here back together, which is gonna be the exact opposite of taking it apart. I won't bore you with that. But I did wanna crack inside of this thing here and take a look. There will be links in the description down below if you're interested in getting one of these off of eBay to work with your transceiver, or just to tear it apart and, and experience the magic that is motor-driven capacitors. This is, this is fantastic. All right, there is a video right over here I think you will enjoy next. Thanks for being awesome. We'll see you in the next one.